Good morning, friend of mine. I am Pastor Hugh McKenzie, a pastor from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. A happy day to you and your loved ones. Every morning we share two chapters from the audio Bible narrated by Alexander Scorby and a devotional from one of the chapters shared. May you be spiritually blessed and refreshed as you listen. Please share the presentations so that someone else may be blessed. May God continue to bless you and your family as you listen every day. God bless you. Chapter 21 And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face toward Jerusalem, and drop thy word toward the holy places, and prophesy against the land of Israel. And say to the land of Israel, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I am against thee, and will draw forth my sword out of his sheath, and will cut off from thee the righteous and the wicked. Seeing then that I will cut off from thee the righteous and the wicked, therefore shall my sword go forth out of his sheath against all flesh, from the south to the north, that all flesh may know that I, the Lord, have drawn forth my sword out of his sheath. It shall not return any more. Sigh, therefore, thou son of man, with the breaking of thy loins, and with bitterness sigh before their eyes. And it shall be when they say unto thee, Wherefore sighest thou? that thou shalt answer for the tidings, because it cometh, and every heart shall melt, and all hands shall be feeble, and, and shall be brought to pass, saith the Lord God. Again the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord, Say, A sword, a sword is sharpened, and also furbished. It is sharpened to make a sore slaughter, it is furbished that it may glitter. Should we then make mirth? It contemneth the rod of my son as every tree. And he hath given it to be furbished, that it may be handled. This sword is sharpened, and it is furbished, to give it into the hand of the slayer. Cry and howl, son of man, for it shall be upon my people. It shall be upon all the princes of Israel. Terrors by reason of the sword shall be upon my people. Smite therefore upon thy thigh because it is a trial. And what if the sword contemn even the rod? It shall be no more, saith the Lord God. Thou therefore, son of man, prophesy and smite thine hands together, and let the sword be doubled the third time, the sword of the slain. It is the sword of the great men that are slain, which entereth into their privy chambers. I have set the point of the sword against all their gates, that their heart may faint and their ruins be multiplied. Ah, it is made bright, it is wrapped up for the slaughter. Go thee one way or other, either on the right hand or on the left, whithersoever thy face is set. I will also smite mine hands together, and I will cause my fury to rest. I, the Lord, have said it. The word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, Also, thou son of man, appoint thee two ways, that the sword of the king of Babylon may come. Both twain shall come forth out of one land, and choose thou a place, choose it at the head of the way to the city. Appoint a way that the sword may come to Rabbath of the Ammonites, and to Judah in Jerusalem the defensive. For the king of Babylon stood at the parting of the way, at the head of the two ways, to use divination. He made his arrows bright, he consulted with images, he looked in the liver. At his right hand was the divination for Jerusalem, to appoint captains to open the mouth in the slaughter, to lift up the voice with shouting, to appoint battering rams against the gates, to cast a mount, and to build a fort. And it shall be unto them as a false divination in their sight, to them that have sworn oaths. But he will call to remembrance the iniquity that they may be taken. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because ye have made your iniquity to be remembered, in that your transgressions are discovered, so that in all your doings your sins do appear, because, I say, that ye are come to remembrance, ye shall be taken with the hand. And thou, profane, wicked prince of Israel, whose day is come, when iniquity shall have an end, thus saith the Lord God, Remove the diadem, and take off the crown. This shall not be the same. Exalt him that is low, and abase him that is high. I will overturn, overturn, overturn it, and it shall be no more. 
until he come whose right it is, and I will give it him. And thou, son of man, prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord God concerning the Ammonites and concerning their reproach. Even say thou, The sword, the sword is drawn, for the slaughter it is furbished to consume because of the glittering. Whilst they see vanity unto thee, whilst they divine a lie unto thee, to bring thee upon the necks of them that are slain of the wicked, whose day is come, when their iniquity shall have an end. Shall I cause it to return into his sheath? I will judge thee in the place where thou wast created, in the land of thy nativity. And I will pour out mine indignation upon thee. I will blow against thee in the fire of my wrath, and deliver thee into the hand of brutish men, and skillful to destroy. Thou shalt be for fuel to the fire. Thy blood shall be in the midst of the land. Thou shalt be no more remembered. For I, the Lord, have spoken it. Chapter 7 When I would have healed Israel, then the iniquity of Ephraim was discovered, and the wickedness of Samaria, for they commit falsehood. And the thief cometh in, and the troop of robbers spoileth without. And they consider not in their hearts that I remember all their wickedness. Now their own doings have beset them about. They are before my face. They make the king glad with their wickedness, and the princes with their lies. They are all adulterers, as an oven heated by the baker, who ceaseth from raising after he hath kneaded the dough until it be leavened. In the day of our king the princes have made him sick with bottles of wine. He stretched out his hand with scorners, for they have made ready their heart like an oven whilst they lie in wait. Their baker sleepeth all the night, in the morning it burneth as a flaming fire. They are all hot as an oven, and have devoured their judges. All their kings are fallen. There is none among them that calleth unto me. Ephraim, he hath mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. Strangers have devoured his strength, and he knoweth it not. Yea, gray hairs are here and there upon him, yet he knoweth not. And the pride of Israel testifieth to his face. And they do not return to the Lord their God, nor seek him for all this. Ephraim also is like a silly dove, without heart. They call to Egypt, they go to Assyria. When they shall go, I will spread my net upon them, I will bring them down as the fowls of the heaven, I will chastise them as their congregation hath heard. Woe unto them, for they have fled from me, destruction unto them, because they have transgressed against me. Though I have redeemed them, yet they have spoken lies against me. And they have not cried unto me with their heart, when they howled upon their beds. They assemble themselves for corn and wine, and they rebel against me. Though I have bound and strengthened their arms, yet do they imagine mischief against me. They return, but not to the Most High. They are like a deceitful bow. Their princes shall fall by the sword, for the rage of their tongue. This shall be their derision in the land of Egypt. Our text for meditation is Luke chapter 11 and verse 2. Luke chapter 11 and verse 2 the bible states he said to them when you pray say our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come new king james version the bible says in luke chapter 11 and verse 2 he said to them when you pray say our father in heaven hallowed be your name today's message is entitled Approaching God with reverence. Approaching God with reverence. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, we pray that you would take charge of your word even now. Bless every listener, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The story is told of a man by the name of Josiah Wedgwood. Josiah Wedgwood was an English maker of the famous Wedgwood pottery. One day he was showing a nobleman through his factory and one of Wedgwood's employees, a young boy, was accompanying them. The nobleman was profane and vulgar and cursed frequently. At first the little boy was shocked by his irreverence. Then he became fascinated by the man's coarse jokes and laughed at them. Wedgwood, the owner of the factory, was deeply distressed. At the conclusion of the tour, he showed the nobleman a vase or a vase of unique design. The man was charmed by its exquisite shape and rare beauty. 
As he reached for the vase, Mr. Wedgwood purposely let it fall to the floor. The nobleman uttered an angry oath and cursed and said, I wanted that vase for my collection and you have ruined it by your carelessness. Wedgwood answered, Sir, there are other ruined things more precious than a vase which can never be restored. You can never give back to that young man who just left us the reverence for sacred things which his parents have tried to teach him for years. You have undone their labor in less than half an hour by your cursing and swearing. Ladies and gentlemen, the nobleman, by his cursing and swearing, did not respect or hallow the name of God. Ladies and gentlemen, to hallow the name of the Lord requires that the words in which we speak of the Supreme Being be uttered with reverence. Again, we say to hallow the name of, of the Lord requires that the words in which we speak of the Supreme Being be uttered with reverence. Psalm 101 verse 9 says, Holy and reverent is his name. We are never in any manner to treat lightly the titles or the name of God. In prayer we enter the audience chamber of the Most High and we should come before him with holy awe. You see, friend of mine, the angels veil their faces in his presence. The cherubim and the bright and holy seraphim approached his throne with solemn reverence. How much more should we, finite sinful beings, come in a reverent manner before the Lord our Maker? But you see, to hallow the name of the Lord means much more than this. We may, like the Jews in Christ, they manifest the greatest outward reverence for God and yet profane his name continually. Now, according to Exodus chapter 34, verse 5 to 7, the name of the Lord is merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. And of the church of Christ it is written, This is the name, this is the name, wherewith she shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 16. So then, this name, the name of Christ, is put upon every follower of Christ. That's why we are called Christians. It is the heritage of the child of God. The family is called after the father. So the prophet Jeremiah, in the time of Israel's sore distress and tribulation prayed, We are called by thy name, leave us not. Jeremiah chapter 14 and verse 9. This name, the name of Jesus, the name of God, is hallowed by the angels of heaven, by the inhabitants of unfallen worlds. And by the way, there are other unfallen worlds, according to Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. And so when you pray, hallowed be thy name, you ask that it may be reverenced in this world and hallowed in you. When you pray, hallowed be thy name, you're asking that God's name be reverenced in this world and respected by you. You see, friend of mine, God has acknowledged you before men and angels as his child. Pray that you may do no dishonor to the worthy name by the which you are called, according to James chapter 2 and verse 7. So, friend of mine, if you have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, God sends you into the world as his representative. In every act of life, you are to make manifest the name of God. This petition, hallowed be thy name, calls upon you to possess his character. In other words, you cannot hallow his name, you cannot represent him to the world, unless in life and character you represent the very life and character of God. 
and this you can do only through the acceptance of the grace and righteousness and the power of Jesus Christ friend of mine with God's power and his grace we can represent him today let us pray loving Heavenly Father help us to respect you and your holy worthy name today may we remember that you are counting on us to represent you to all the world give us a successful day we pray in Jesus name